Red light therapy masks can be priced as low as $100 right up to $1,000. So what's so special with these super expensive red light therapy masks? I'm affiliated with some of the companies mentioned in this video and I will earn a commission if you buy through my links or discount codes. Products were provided to me free of charge and all opinions are my own. This is not medical advice. Some of the most highest priced red light therapy masks on the market use lasers. So what's the deal here? We know lasers are expensive, but are they actually better for your skin? In all honesty, I don't think they are. Let me explain. Now lasers sound cool, right? But at the end of the day, all a laser is doing is delivering light. It's exactly the same as an LED. Assuming the wavelength, the color, and the power, the energy from the light is the same, whether it's coming from a laser or an LED doesn't really matter. You see, lasers are quite unique in that they concentrate the light into one very small point. Everyone's seen the videos with the cat chasing the laser pointed dot on the floor. Now, if you do the same with an LED torch, it's going to light up a large area instead of one focused dot. So a key difference between the two is what the light does when it leaves the source. Does it stay focused in a small beam or does it spread out? Now, I should mention there is another difference between lasers and LEDs when it comes to red light therapy, and I'll share this later in the video. So now that we know this, what does it mean for us? when we're looking to buy a red light therapy mask and also what does it mean for the benefits we're hoping to get from these masks well before we can answer that we need to stop and think what are we trying to achieve with these light therapy masks and what does the science show us is beneficial from these masks well you see red light therapy also known as photobiomodulation involves light in the red and also near infrared wavelengths penetrating the body and getting into the skin cells in turn energizing them helping them with cellular function and providing all of the good benefits such as reduced fine lines and wrinkles, improved elasticity, and improving skin tone and texture. So the masks that we see simply incorporate either LED or laser diodes, and they shine this light into the skin. Now, I'm not going to get into the technicalities around ideal wavelengths, ideal power output, dosing, frequency of use. I've covered all of that in my red light therapy mask buyers video. I'll put a link to that down below. Speaking of down below, can you hit the like button if you're enjoying this and also be sure to subscribe for future videos. Now, research has shown that delivering the right amount of red light therapy into the skin on the face can have all of these benefits. The studies supporting this had people using masks or even smaller handheld LED clusters on their skin. So what we need to do is get the right amount of light into the skin, into the areas you're trying to treat. There's no point treating the elbow or the neck if your goal is the wrinkles around your eyes. Though, as I have covered in another video, there is some research to show that treating one area of the body can lead to benefits in another area of the body. But when it comes to skin rejuvenation, anti-aging benefits, the science is pretty clear. We need to treat the area we're trying to improve. So knowing all of this, you've probably already figured out the answer to the question, what is better for skin health? lasers or LEDs? Well, typically it's gonna make more sense to use LEDs. Why? Well, if you look at the back of a normal red light therapy mask, you'll see anything from say 60 to 200 LED diodes. Remembering that the light from LEDs spreads as it's emitted and compare this to a laser which keeps the light directly in front of it it's pretty obvious that an LED is going to have much better light transmission better spread on the skin from an LED and you can see this from some of my clips in the masks I have reviewed by the way I've reviewed nearly 20 odd red light therapy masks and I do have all the data and a really cool shopping tool over at lighttherapyinsiders.com check it out if you want to and as you can see, masks that use lasers create what I call a polka dot effect on the skin. You get a massive concentration of light directly in front of the laser diode, but then as you move away from that diode, it drops off. You get a low amount of energy. Now compare this to the LED masks and you don't get as extreme of an effect. The light is much more evenly dispersed. And personally, I think this is better because as we saw, masks have gaps in between where their diodes are. So we need some light to fill this space. Otherwise, you're going to get massive amounts of energy every centimeter or every inch, depending on how many diodes there are in a mask. And when it comes to lasers, as they're more expensive, mask companies typically use less of them than they do with LEDs. And as I've covered in my reviews, a lot of mask companies don't even put LEDs or lasers in the areas you really want them. You may be lucky to get one around the eyes or maybe two under the eyes. And even then it's not great. So really you want the best light coverage possible. And I think LEDs do a much better job of that. 
Now, of course, lasers can serve their purpose. If you do just want to treat one particular area and you have a device, whether it's a mask or a handheld cluster device that can target that specific area, then great. But again, that's not what we really see with masks and it's not what most people are doing. Now you may be thinking, well, hey, if I need space for the light to disperse, is it not better to move the mask further away from the skin so we do get a better blend of light? And that's a really good question. And some masks do that. If you look at a mask such as the Therabody Theraface, it actually sits about an inch off the face, so you do get a good light spread. Though I will be covering this topic in another video, the pros and cons between direct on the face and away from the face masks, because even though you might get better light coverage, it does have some negatives. But it also leads into a question around panels. Could using a red light therapy panel three to four inches away from the face do an even better job than a mask and again this is a valid point and something i've covered in another video but really if you're going to use a mask that is directly on the skin like most masks are i think you should save the money and go with a mask that has leds but even better find a mask that's got a lot of leds the more the better or check out my shopping tool and find a mask that has a really good zone coverage score because at the end of the day, it's important to get adequate light coverage to the areas that you're trying to treat and trying to improve. Now, I mentioned there's another key difference between lasers and LEDs, and that is around the wavelength. On screen, I have a typical wavelength breakdown from an LED mask. You can see a reasonably wide range of light for each LED peak. Sure, it may peak at 660, but you're getting light right through from 640 through to 670 nanometers. Contrast this to what an LED does, which produces a very narrow spike, and it's pretty much all in one wavelength. What is better? Well, it's a good question. You see, the research looks at particular wavelengths, and they find that, hey, a certain wavelength is beneficial and produces this result. But we know photobiomodulation works on more than just one wavelength. It's typically a range. The results seem to come from a wide range of wavelengths. And in fact, different wavelengths may even have some benefits that other wavelengths don't have. And this is another reason why I think LEDs are better. Not only does the light spread better, but you'll get an exposure to multiple wavelengths rather than just one single wavelength. Now, lasers and photobomb modulation definitely have their place. If you need to get a lot of energy into one small space with a particular wavelength, then lasers are where it's at. This is great for treating internal injuries or your brain or for wound healing. And there's devices out there that do exactly this. But when it comes to the face, you're trying to get a nice blend of light in as many areas as possible. And that's why I think you're better off sticking with LEDs. Plus you can save some money.